is set down for first reading. The House comes to questions for oral answer. Question number one in the name of the Honourable David Cunliffe. Speaker, to the Prime Minister, does he accept inequality, including asset inequality, is increasing in New Zealand? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no. Uh, the best evidence shows that income inequality is not increasing in New Zealand, and I'm advised that there is no reliable time series on changes in wealth inequality. As the Finance Minister noted yesterday, uh, the OECD has reported that New Zealand was one of only six developed economies in which both income inequality and disposable income inequality was flat or slightly better between 2007 and 2011. This is quite an achievement through one of the worst recessions in decades. Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Honourable David Cunliffe. How does the Prime Minister feel about the Oxfam report that shows that the top 10% of wealthy New Zealanders own more than the other 90% put together? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, um, I suspect that's probably similar to lots of uh, parts of the world. But what I can say is that... What I can say is that... Under a Labour government with their announcements today, every single New Zealander and Kiwi Saver will be worse off when they have a capital gains tax on their Kiwi Saver account. Mr. Speaker. Sub order. Supplementary question, Honourable David Cunningham. How can he be so relaxed about the growing gap between the rich and poor when the median income in, say, St. Helier's has increased? by $6,700 a year since 2006 to 42700 while the median income in Mangere has fallen by $200 to just $19,700. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, uh, I didn't actually say what the members said, I said. Um, and what I would say, Mr Speaker, is this, is that at a time when the economy is uh, in surplus, when it's earning more than it's spending, putting a tax on every farm, on every business, on every Kiwi saver will simply make the situation worse for so many New Zealanders. No wonder they won't vote for that. Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Honourable David Mr Cunliffe. Speaker, in light of that answer, does the Prime Minister agree that a 35% increase in luxury car sales over the past two years while at the same time the number of children living in poverty has grown to 285,000, shows that inequality is rising, or does he not? Right, Honourable Mr. Prime Speaker, Minister. No, that's not a reliable measure of income inequality. Uh, but, Mr Speaker, what would be uh, worth noting, though, is that uh, of households that earn uh, $60,000 or less, that's 50 per cent of all New Zealand households, uh, Mr Speaker, they pay $2.5 billion in tax and they receive over $7 billion in benefits. Mr Speaker, through the worst of the economic times, this government has supported those most vulnerable New Zealanders. Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, how does the Prime Minister feel about the fact that home ownership rates are at their lowest levels in 50 years? And does he think it acceptable in that pupils in our lower income areas in, school, in schools are changing schools, uh, half of them, it, once a year or more? So we've got declining home ownership, dislocated children and growing inequality. How does he feel about that? Well, Mr. Right, Speaker, Honourable Prime Minister. One thing I do know is that if you put a capital gains tax on rental properties, as the member is suggesting, because in fact virtually all property is excluded under the Labor plan, what that will do is put rents up. So those who are renting a property, watching parliamentary question time today, better know that under a Labor government they will pay more. In other words, they will have less to spend. No wonder they'll never support that policy. Okay. Supplementary question, Right Honourable Winston. Sorry, Right Honourable Winston. Uh, could I ask the Prime Minister, if New Zealand is doing so well and Australia is doing so bad, how is it that the incomes gap between New Zealanders and Australians have grown not shrunk since he has been the leader of this country. Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, the member is utterly wrong. <laughs> Order, sup supplementary question, Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, does the Prime Minister think it's fair that the incomes of the top 1% of income earners in New Zealand have risen 10 times faster than the bottom 10%?
And does he think that a capital gains tax might just help equalise up some of that growing gap between the rich and the poor? Yeah, Mr. Right, Mr. Honourable no, Prime Minister. In answer to the last part of the question, no. So what, what is very important that New Zealanders understand is this. A capital gains tax in the way that Labour is described today will be on every small business in New Zealand, every business in New Zealand, every Kiwi Saver account in New Zealand, every part of the productive sector of New Zealand. And if we want people in poverty, then we should cancel their jobs. And that's what Labour is doing, putting a tax on prosperity for New Zealand. Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Honourable David Mr Cummins. Speaker, since the Prime Minister opened by quoting the OECD report and then went on to criticise our capital gains tax, could he confirm to the House whether his and the OECD measure of income inequality that he just cited includes capital gains as income, or would he accept that his credibility is now down the loo? <laughs> right, Honourable Mr. Prime Speaker. Minister. Mr Speaker, I'd need to check the paperwork on that and it would have been quite helpful if David Cunliffe had as well. <laughs> order, 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 order. Supplementary question, Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, seeing, Mr. seeing as Mr New has been put into contention, how is it, Prime Minister, that just uh, six weeks ago, according to Morris Williamson, Mr Liu didn't speak a word of English so he couldn't have a relationship, but now he's singing like a bellbird to the Prime Minister in the best of English. If the Prime Minister considers there's any Prime Minister a responsibility... Order! Order! I, I know... Is this a point of order? Point of order. The uh, Labor opposition would like to yield a question to New Zealand First to order. enable Mr order. Peters to re-ask that question so the order. Prime Minister can recover Mem his memory. Order. The member can resume his seat. I know we're in an exciting time of the year, but members still have to abide by standing order. Question number two, Materia today. Order. Order. Show some respect. Show some respect to material.